All right, welcome everyone to another deep dive. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at Zorin OS 17.3. Um, it's a brand new release and there's actually quite a bit to unpack here, especially if you're starting to think about what your computing options might be moving forward. Yeah, We have a lot of details about what's new, what they were thinking when they built this new version. And what we want to do is try to get to the key takeaways. You know what's really at the heart of this. That's right. This is really about making computing smoother, easier, more private. Mm. And we'll be getting into that and how 17.3 tries to accomplish this, the new features, the enhanced privacy, and how it all comes together. You know, this release is coming at a really interesting time mm. because as most people probably know, Windows 10 support is ending in October. And there are gonna be a ton of PCs out there that just aren't gonna meet those hardware requirements to upgrade to Windows 11. So where does that leave people? It's a big question, isn't it? I mean, you're either stuck buying new hardware. And that's obviously a pretty significant cost for a lot of people. Or you have to find another way. And that's where Zorn OS 17.3 is really trying to position itself as a viable option. Breathe new life into those machines. Make them fast, make them secure, but most importantly, make them accessible. So you can keep using what you have without sacrificing your computing experience. Let's talk a little bit more about that accessibility, especially for those who are, you know, really used to Windows, switching to a whole new operating system. That can feel daunting. And a lot of times, I think the biggest worry is, is the software that I use every day going to work? So how does Zorin address that? They've done a lot of work to make it easier. They've really expanded their database of Windows installer files that the system recognizes, over 150 apps. But what's really interesting is how they use that to guide you. Guide you how? It's not just like, this isn't going to work, right? Right, exactly. It's more than that. So say you try to run a Windows installer for something like Obsidian. Zorin will actually recognize that. And then it will point you right to the native Linux version in their software store. It's that proactive. And if there isn't a direct equivalent for a Windows app, it'll try to suggest something similar that's native. Like they use the example of recommending their built-in document viewer as a good alternative to Adobe Acrobat Reader. That's pretty smart. That kind of helps you learn as you go, I guess, instead of just throwing up a roadblock. It's like, here's a solution. <laughs> now, there is one pretty big change in Zorin OS 17.3 that really stood out to me, and that's that they've switched their default web browser from Firefox to Brave. So why make such a big change? What was the thinking there? It seems like it really came down to concerns about some recent moves by Mozilla, changes in their policies that, in Zorin's view, don't really align with the strong emphasis on privacy that Zorin OS tries to provide. So yeah. they felt like they needed to step back and reevaluate. And they had a pretty specific list of things they were looking for in a new default browser, right? It had to be free and open source. It had to be fully featured, could handle things like protected content for streaming. Strong privacy was a must have, had to be popular and recognizable. And, you know, it had to be mature and well maintained from a security standpoint. Yeah, those were the non negotiables. And after doing their research, and I think even consulting with some of their users, they landed on Brave particularly for its focus on privacy. So let's get into those privacy features. What makes Brave stand out? Well, Brave is built from the ground up with privacy in mind. It's got those built-in shields that block trackers and fingerprinting, which websites use to follow you around online. There's even a private browsing mode that uses Tor for extra anonymity. It comes with its own ad blocker, so that cleans things up and keeps ad networks off your back. It blocks third-party cookies automatically. And those annoying cookie banners that pop up everywhere, Brave just takes care of those for you. This shift really reflects, I think, a broader movement in privacy-conscious operating systems that emphasizes user control over their data, which is really just a response to what people want more transparency and protection online. That definitely sounds like a big boost for privacy right out of the box. And they didn't just stop at making Brave the default, did they? They actually went a little further to tweak it for Zorin OS users. Yeah, that's right. They've set up some custom default settings within Brave to try and make it you know, a little bit more streamlined for new users and to make sure it visually fits in nicely with the overall look and feel of Zorin OS. It's those little details that can make a difference. It's important to point out, though, this only applies to new installations of Zorin OS 17.3. So if you're already using Zorin, you can easily install Brave or any other browser you prefer through the software store. Right. Important clarification there. Now let's move on to another area that got a significant upgrade in this release, and that's Zorin Connect. 
For those who maybe haven't used it before, what exactly is Zorin Connect and what does it let you do? Zorin Connect is all about making your Zorin OS computer and your Android phone work better together. It's kind of like a bridge between the two. You know, you can sync notifications, you can easily share files, you can even see your text messages and calls on your computer and reply to them. You can control your music, you can even use your phone as a wireless mouse or keyboard. What's really interesting about these improvements to Zorin Connect is that it suggests a future where this kind of seamless integration between desktops and mobiles isn't just a nice extra, it's something we expect. And it's similar to what we've seen with the big players, but this is focused on an open source approach. It's about creating that cohesive digital experience across devices. It sounds like the Zorin Connect mobile app itself got a pretty big redesign with this update. Yeah, definitely. It's got a whole new look, and it actually adapts to whatever theme you're using on your Android device. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice touch. But it's not just about looks. There's some really practical new features and improvements. Like the remote input feature that's been expanded, right? Exactly. So now when you're using your phone as a mouse or keyboard for your computer, you've got middle click support. You can write and send text from your phone, and you can even use your phone's gyroscope to control the mouse cursor which can be pretty cool for things like presentations. Yeah, that's a lot more versatile. And there are some other nice refinements across the app too. Absolutely. You can now share links to computers that are offline and they'll open automatically when the computer comes back online. You can have separate home screen widgets on your phone for multiple Zorin OS computers if you've got more than one. So that makes things easier to manage. And now it even shows the album art for music playing on your phone on your computer screen you also have those direct share targets in Android's share menus, so sending files to your computer is faster. And for people who use Android's work profile, they've improved the notification filtering, which should help cut down on distractions. Yeah, definitely. They also added more granular control over those notification channels, so you can really customize it. You can now search for apps in the notification plugin settings on your computer. And there's even a way to cancel pending pairing requests between devices. On top of all the new features, they've also worked on making Zorin Connect more accessible, fixed some bugs, and just made the overall performance and stability better. It seems like they've been really listening to what users want and have made some big steps in making it a smoother experience. It sounds like it's become a much more mature and user-friendly way to connect your devices. Now, what about for users who have touchscreen devices? Did they do anything to improve the touch experience? Yeah, there are some nice tweaks there. They made a lot of behind the scenes improvements and fixed some things to make the touchscreen experience smoother. And one of the most noticeable things is you can now easily bring up the on-screen keyboard right from the system panel. Before, it would usually just pop up when you tapped on a text field. But now you've got more control. You can just enable a button for it in the panel through the interface settings in Zorin Appearance. That's pretty handy, especially if you're using a tablet or something like a two-in-one device. So let's talk about the core apps and software packages that come with Zorin OS 17.3. Are they up to date? Definitely. Zorin OS 17.3 comes with the latest versions of a lot of the pre-installed applications. And that's a big plus because it means you're getting all the newest features and improvements right away without having to download a bunch of updates as soon as you install it. Plus, Zorin still supports Flatpak, AppImage, and Snap packages. Those are kind of like self-contained app bundles that make installing and updating software more reliable and less likely to cause conflicts. So you've got access to a huge variety of apps in their latest versions. And that support for all those different formats is great because it means users have a lot of options for getting the software they need and keeping everything updated. So you get updated core apps out of the box, and you've still got that easy access to a huge selection of the newest software through those package management systems. That's a great combination. So we've talked about a lot of user-facing improvements, but what about under the hood? Have there been any big changes in terms of security and compatibility with different hardware? Yeah, that's the core of it, right? And there's a lot to talk about there. They've updated a lot of the underlying system technologies and hardware drivers that come with the OS, and that should result in better compatibility overall, and things should run smoother on a wider range of computers. One of the biggest changes is that they now include the latest NVIDIA 570 series graphics drivers right in the installation media. And drivers are basically what allow your operating system to talk to your hardware properly. So having those latest NVIDIA drivers means that Zorin OS 17.3 will work with even the newest NVIDIA RTX 5000 series graphics cards right out of the box. That's great for people with the latest NVIDIA graphics. Now, what about security improvements? What have they done there? Well, security is always a big deal. 
And Zorin OS 17.3 includes all the latest security patches and updates across the whole system. And what's also really important is that they're committed to providing long-term support for the entire Zorin OS 17 series, which means it will keep getting software updates and security patches all the way until June 2027. That's great because it means users can have that peace of mind knowing their system is going to stay secure and up to date for years to come. Yeah, that long-term support is a real plus. So let's say someone's already using Zorin OS. How do they get the 17.3 version? And what about new users who want to try it out? If you're already running Zorin OS 17, upgrading is really easy. Just install all the latest updates through the software updater tool. And if you're still on Zorin OS 16, there's a direct upgrade path to 17.3. You get to keep all your files and data. And Zorin has a really detailed guide on their website that walks you through it step by step. For anyone new to Zorin who wants to give 17.3 a try, you can download any of the additions directly from their website. And if you bought Zorin OS 17 Pro in the past, you can use that same download link from your confirmation email to get the 17.3 Pro version. So they've made it really clear how to upgrade or get started. Zorin OS 17.3 really does seem to offer a lot of great improvements, especially with Windows 10 support ending soon. I think it's worth taking a moment to recap what we've talked about. We looked at how it could be a way to keep older computers going, the switch to Brave as the default browser, which puts a bigger emphasis on privacy. The major improvements to Zorin Connect for better integration with Android devices, better support for touch screens, updated core applications, and their ongoing commitment to security and making sure Zorin OS works well with lots of different hardware. It really seems like they've addressed a lot of the concerns that people have especially if you're thinking about switching away from an unsupported operating system or buying a whole new computer. I think this deep dive into Zorin OS 17.3 has really highlighted the impact our choices about operating systems have. It's not just about the features you see right away, it's about thinking long term how long your devices will last, and how secure your data is going to be. So maybe this will encourage you to take a look at your current operating system, see how it stacks up against what's important to you, and maybe explore some of the other options that are out there. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Thanks for having me.